Hey, Den, I guess we made all the papes this time. So how'd my picture look? Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 child stars who made a comeback as adults. It's been a wild ride. Can you believe I have two daughters around your age? Kind of scary. I have so much to fill you in on. For this list, we'll be looking at celebrities who became famous as children, then fell out of the spotlight, only to make a resounding comeback in their adult years. What former child star are you eager to see return to the limelight? Let us know in the comments. Number 10. Anna Klumski At the very young age of 10 years old, Anna Klumski was shot to stardom after making her feature film debut in the heartfelt coming-of-age drama, My Girl. Going to Hollywood to live with the Brady Bunch. I want to live with them too. No, you can't. They have enough kids. You'll have to live with the Partridge family. From 1999 to 2005, Klumski took a hiatus from the movie industry, during which she bagged a degree in international studies. After trying out a few jobs as a fact checker and an editorial assistant, the Chicago-born actress decided to retrace her steps back to the screen. I don't know if I should kiss you or spank you. Who says you can't do both? <laughs> <laughs> Please. You did great. The audience loved you. Only because I had a good part. She picked up guest appearances on multiple TV shows before landing the role of Amy Bruckheimer on Veep, which earned her a whopping six Emmy nominations. She further increased her star power in 2022 with a leading role on the Netflix miniseries Inventing Anna. You know I give good story. Let me do this. Number 9. Sean Astin As the son of renowned Hollywood actors John Astin and Patty Duke, Sean Astin was introduced into the movie business at an early age. His cinematic debut came when he was just 13 years old, with the role of Mikey Walsh in The Goonies. Down here, it's our time! It's our time down here! That's all over the second we ride up Troy's bucket. Over the next few years, Aston appeared in supporting roles in multiple films, but never quite capitalised on his childhood fame to secure another defining performance. That was until the Lord of the Rings trilogy, where he was cast as Samwise Gamgee, sidekick to Frodo Baggins. Come on, Mr. Frodo. I can't carry it for you. But I can carry you! His performance, like every other part of the trilogy, received critical acclaim and won him multiple awards. Today, he can be spotted on well-known series like The Big Bang Theory and Stranger Things. Look at me now. I get to date Joyce Myers. Ha! Huh? Are you kidding me? I get to date Joyce See, it all works out in the end, doesn't it? Number 8. Cole Sprouse Along with his twin brother Dylan, Cole Sprouse started acting from as early as eight months old in TV shows, films and commercials. From now on, it's just you and me. Cody, can I talk to you? What's up, bye boy? Before his major breakthrough as a child star in The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody and its spin-off The Sweet Life on Deck, he shared several roles with his brother. The first role that he didn't play interchangeably with Dylan was Ross Geller's son, Ben, on Friends. Do you remember all that stuff I taught you yesterday? Remember all that stuff I taught you yesterday? <laughs> Don't do that. Don't do that. Seriously, your dad doesn't like pranks. Seriously, your dad doesn't like pranks. <laughs> By the end of the Sweet Life franchise in 2011, Sprouse moved on to college and graduated in 2015 with a major in archaeology. Following a five-year hiatus from acting, Sprouse was cast as Jughead Jones in Riverdale, bringing him back to the screens of those who watched him growing up. In case you haven't noticed, I'm weird. I'm a weirdo. I don't fit in, and I don't want to fit in. Have you ever seen me without this stupid hat on? That's weird. Number 7. Joseph Gordon-Levitt Joseph Gordon-Levitt is a classic case of a famous child star who transitioned seamlessly into a successful adult career. I never sleep. I'm exhausted. Besides, you don't have the authority to alter the schedule. I'm in command. Yeah, well, I'm in puberty, pal. <laughs> but what many may not know is that the actor, who began his career at the age of six, once took a break from the hard and fast life of Hollywood superstardom. After playing Tommy Solomon on Third Rock from the Sun, Gordon Levitt moved to New York to attend college, but dropped out after a few years and returned to acting. Calling for details? For what? 
details about the party. Who is this? Or I'll hang up. If you don't know me, I'll save you some time. I know everyone, and I have all the time in the world. Folly of youth. Since then, he has appeared in many blockbuster movies and even made his directorial and screenwriting debut with the 2013 film Don John. If one thing's for sure, Gordon Levitt seems to have cracked the code on moving from teen idol to leading Hollywood man. There is no why, just uh, because uh, um, when I see a beautiful place to put my wire, I cannot resist. Number 6. Maya Bialik In the early 90s, Maya Bialik donned her funky hat and rose to popularity as the quirky title character on NBC's Blossom. Oh god, what if this is just a cruel hoax being perpetrated at my expense? I'll just die. I'm not making sense here, am I? But hey, what does? I mean, the state bird of Utah is the seagull. The show was praised for its female-driven story and for dealing with serious topics that most other primetime series shied away from at the time. After Blossom ended, Bialik took a step back from the spotlight and spent some time earning a Bachelor of Science from UCLA. She returned to the screen in 2005 and continued her studies in the field of neuroscience to acquire her PhD. Tell us about your work, Amy. <laughs> I doubt you'd understand. Sheldon tells me you only have a master's degree. <laughs> this was around the time that she began playing, fittingly, neuroscientist Amy Farrah Fowler in The Big Bang Theory, where she actually starred opposite Johnny Galecki, another former child star. Since 2021, Bialik has been the host of Jeopardy. It's an immense honor, especially for someone who's dedicated so much of my life to academia, to knowing things, and to being able to communicate things. Number 5. Drew Barrymore For many child stars, early fame can get overwhelming and really negatively impact their lives. Sadly, this was the case for Drew Barrymore. Born into a family of renowned thespians, Barrymore was acting before she even knew how to read. Her breakout role came at the age of seven when she starred in E.T. the Extraterrestrial. The role was a pretty easy land given that her godfather is none other than Steven Spielberg. By 13, Barrymore had unfortunately developed alcohol addiction problems that sent her to rehab. At, at first I was clean, but I, you know, I was off drugs, but I still had the same behavior and was still doing the same things. And that's when I really got clean, when I realized I just wasn't doing it right. Luckily, she beat the odds, cleaned up her act, and resurfaced in a host of successful films throughout the 2000s. Although she's currently taken a hiatus from acting, we're still graced with her lovable charm on her daytime talk show. We're gonna spend an hour every day celebrating life. Oh. I'm so excited, I could scream. Wanna do it with me? Guys ready? <laughs> Number four, Jason Bateman. Throughout his long career, Jason Bateman has successfully transitioned from a child star to a teen idol, and now to an award-winning actor and director. That career progression was by no means easy, though. And is it too much to think that I may want to spread a little Christmas cheer among the little maggots of Oak Park? <laughs> Colorist touched, David. Following his run on the sitcom The Hogan Family, Bateman found himself going down the dangerous path of many child stars before and after him. By the early 2000s, we hadn't heard much about him until he landed the central role of Michael Bluth on Arrested Development. You've made nothing but sacrifices for this family, and tonight it all pays off, my boy. Tonight your granddad makes me partner. This was followed up with a string of comedy flicks throughout the 2000s and early 2010s. Bateman finally made the switch from comedy to drama in 2017, with his lauded acting and directing work on the Netflix series Ozark. Just give it to me. I want more than just a 10%. I want it all and I want to take it down there. Number three, Neil Patrick Harris. After being discovered at a drama camp, Neil Patrick Harris got his first professional acting role in the 1988 film Clara's Heart. Although he received a Golden Globe nomination for that movie, it was his performance as the titular child prodigy in Doogie Howser MD that catapulted him to fame. Now go get me something I can use for a leg brace. Go. Okay, clear away, folks. Come on, stay back. Who is this kid? That's my son, the doctor. 
His career on the screen stalled after that, but Harris continued being active on the Broadway scene. In 2004, he appeared as a vulgar, fictionalized version of himself in Harold and Kumar Go to White Castle. The Doogie line always works on strippers. Lap dance. This paved the way for his comeback role in How I Met Your Mother. The show revitalized his career, which now boasts of multiple Emmys, a Tony, and several award show hosting credits. It's gonna be legend. Wait for it. And I hope you're not lactose intolerant because the second half of that word is dairy. Number two, Jodie Foster. 1976 was a great year for Jodie Foster. Yeah, I understand. And it means something, really. The intelligent, bright-eyed actress got her breakthrough role in Martin Scorsese's Palme d'Or winning Taxi Driver, which saw her receive an Oscar nomination at just 14. That same year, she starred in four other films and also hosted Saturday Night Live. In 1980, Foster enrolled as a full-time student at Yale, and by the time she graduated five years later, she had trouble finding movie roles. That all went away, though, with the 1988 drama The Accused, where Foster played an assault survivor searching for justice. Now, well, who the hell are you to decide that I ain't good enough to be a witness? Huh, I, bet, I bet you if I went to law school and I didn't live in some goddamn dump, then I, I would be good enough. The role earned her her first Oscar for Best Actress and marked the beginning of many mature performances that we would come to know and love Foster for. You see a lot, Doctor. But are you strong enough to point that high-powered perception at yourself? What about it? Why don't you, why don't you look at yourself and write down what you see? Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Christian Bale Long before he donned Batman's cape in the Dark Knight trilogy, a teenaged Christian Bale got the lead part in Steven Spielberg's Empire of the Sun out of 4,000 others. Didn't I teach you anything? Yes! Yeah. You taught me that people will do anything for a potato. The movie brought him a lot of fame, a status he grew to dislike soon after. Nevertheless, he persisted, picking up a bunch of less popular roles over the next decade. By the 2000s, Bale began to establish himself as an actor willing to undergo a complete transformation for a role. His turn as Patrick Bateman in American Psycho reintroduced him to mature audiences and set the stage for his career-defining performance as Bruce Wayne. Child or adult, Bale was, and still is, one of the most captivating actors of his generation. It's not who I am underneath, but what I do that defines me. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.